Hello and welcome to Gina. In this video, we will be learning how to apply all kinds of operations along a spline in your scene. Gina has three main types of splines, generic splines, road splines, and river splines. We'll be taking a look at each of them in this video, starting by creating a generic spline. To create a spline, right click in the hierarchy, select Gina, and click on add spline. This will create a spline game object that we can now add nodes to. To add nodes, make sure you select the spline object, simply hold the left control button and click anywhere on any object in your scene to create a node. In order to create a curve, you need at least two nodes in your spline. You can also select and move these nodes wherever you want, and you can adjust the tangents of each one of these nodes to your liking. Notice how whenever we add a new node, the spline automatically smooths. This is due to the settings that we have in our overview panel. Looking over to our overview, you'll notice that the smooth strength has been set to 0.8 and we have an auto smooth feature that's locked on. If you untick auto smooth, every time you add a node, the spline will not smooth. You can also increase or decrease the strength of the smooth and every time you add a node, it'll smooth the entire spline. If you do not wish to have the smooth feature enabled, you can untick it, create the nodes and adjust it manually by clicking on the smooth button. There's also this snap to ground feature that auto snaps the nodes to the ground whenever a new one is added. You can also snap to ground manually by clicking the snap to ground button. Along with snapping, we also have the ability to simplify our spline. You can adjust the simplification strength and the simplify Y scale. You can also add nodes between the curves along your spline by clicking on subdivide. That way we can have more specific adjustments along the spline itself. We can also easily remove all the nodes from our spline by clicking the clear all nodes option. Next up, we have our extension panel where you can perform any operation along the spline. By default, Gina comes with a list of built-in spline extensions, but you can easily make your own by using Gina's API. The ones that come by default are carve, clear details, clear trees, extrusion, rivers, roads, and a spawner. We're gonna go through each one of these throughout the video, as well as showing you various techniques that you can utilize when using Gina splines in your scenes. Let's start by using the carve extension. The carve extension allows you to create embankments and various ridges in your terrain. And the way you do this is by creating nodes and selecting the carve extension itself. Now that we have our carve selected, you'll notice the visualizer that shows the where the carve operation will be performed. This is not actually applied to the terrain until we adjust our settings and hit the carve button. If you aren't happy with the results, you can simply undo the operation, adjust the settings again, and redo the operation. Looking at the settings, we have a width option. We have a height offset. We have a smoothness, which is along the edges of the carve operation. And we also have this option to add fractal noise to the carve operation. Let's go ahead and enable that. And let's take a look at the noise strength settings. So if we increase that, you'll notice the edges of our spline are going to be having noise applied to it. This is using Perlin noise, but we can increase the seed, the octaves, we can lower the octaves, we can increase the frequency. This will take a bit of time to practice, but once you have it at a position you're happy with, you can perform the carve operation again. You'll notice that the carve has actually imprinted this noise around our spline. This is particularly useful for roads and rivers, which I'll be showing you how to make later in the video. Let's take a look at the following scenario. I wish to create a wall that covers a big part of the terrain, and to achieve this, we can use the extrusion extension to create a mesh that follows the path of the spline. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the extrusion extension. And by default, it adds this road material. You can change this material to however you see fit. So to make this appear more like a wall, we can mess around with our settings. Uh, in this case, I'm going to play around with the width and I'm going to increase the height offset. 
probably decrease the size of the width and the height. And there we have a simple wall. Now you might notice that the mesh seems to be floating above the terrain. And one of the ways you can fix this is by snapping the edges down to the terrain. And we have an option for that right here, mesh snap to terrain. I'm gonna click on this. And if you follow your terrain, you'll notice that the mesh itself is actually following the terrain heights. And we can adjust however we wish. I can also decrease the height offset and have more control of the height this way. You can also change the shape of the extrusion through the animation curve. But in my case, I'm gonna leave it as a default. Looking at our terrain, we can see that our extension appears to be intersecting some trees and some details in our terrain. What we need to do is clear these trees and details along our spline so that it aligns perfectly with our extrusion. To do this, I'm gonna add the clear trees extension. And you'll notice this flat texture that goes along the terrain. And we can adjust the settings by its width and its smoothness along the edges, as well as introduce noise and adjust however we wish in order to remove the trees along the spline. And now we can click clear trees. This will clear the trees along the spline using this texture. And if we click away, this is what our end result looks like. However, you'll also notice that the terrain has some details that we are intersecting with our extrusion as well. To remove details, we need to add the clear details extension and adjust it however you see fit. I'm gonna also introduce some noise, have a bit more of a width and clear the details. If we get closer to our terrain, you'll notice the details have indeed been cleared along the wall. Let's say we wish to add rivers to our terrain. There are a few ways you can achieve this in Gina. You may wish to create one manually or use Gina's river utility to create more realistic rivers in your terrain. We're gonna be using Gina's river utility in order to sample our terrain heights and generate a river in the appropriate areas of our terrain. To use Gina's river utility, right click on the hierarchy, go to Gina and select add river flow. This will create a game object with the river flow script attached to it. That's gonna be acting as our sampler for our terrain heights. So to use this, I'm going to control and left click to add a point at the highest point of my terrain in order for Gina to generate a sample that will trickle down, down to the river. This will generate nodes all the way down to the river. And in turn, we can use that to create our spline. So to start using the river flow sampler, I'm gonna control left click on the highest part on my terrain. I might do it on this side as well, just so that they can converge in the center. And I'm gonna click on create river flow. As you can see, it's generated a series of nodes that we can now use to generate our Gina river spline. If you wish to make a new river flow, you can adjust these settings and generate a brand new one. I am happy with this, so I'm going to create a new Gina river spline. And as you can see, we have our spline. What we're looking at here is Gina's attempts at creating a river along the river flow that we generated earlier. It has also added a bunch of extensions we can use to get the river how we want it to look. First thing we need to fix up is the terrain underneath the river. In order for the river to sit right along the terrain, we need to perform a carve operation and adjust it to our liking. So I'm gonna select carve. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. I'm gonna increase the width. I'm gonna add a little bit more noise. I'm gonna increase the smoothness and the height offset. That's looking pretty good. Um, I'm also going to simplify my spline because there's a lot of nodes here and refresh the settings and perform a carb operation. If we click away, you can see that the mesh is sitting pretty nicely on top of the terrain. From here, we can adjust more settings like clearing the trees and the details.
I'm going to go ahead, select the clear trees, increase the width and the smoothness. And I'm also going to select the clear details and increase the width and the smoothness and clear the details. And now our river is sitting nicely on top of the terrain. Now you might see a little bit of artifacts throughout your terrain, like these spikes. In this case, I'm going to make the river a little bit deeper into the terrain. And I'm going to decrease the noise strength, make it look a bit more subtle and perform another carve operation. And now the mesh is sitting perfectly within the range of the carve operation. And now we can go to the river extension and modify the settings how we wish. In this case, I'm gonna increase the start flow so that the water starts simulated a little bit higher. That's looking pretty good. And I'm also going to just move this around slightly. Now that we have it at a position I'm pretty happy with, we need to add reflection probes along the spline so that the mesh can have some reflections. If we click on the spawn extension for reflection probes, it's already been pre-set up with all of the values we need. We can just adjust the flow rate if we want it to be a little bit closer, or we can just click spawn and you'll see that the reflection probes have been added in the correct areas. And now we have our river. Along with rivers, Gina also has the ability to create intricate road networks in your scene. We can easily create a road through Gina's road utility by right clicking on the hierarchy, going to Gina, and go to add road spline. This will create a spline object that we can create our roads with, and it has all of the extensions set up and ready to go. So all we have to do is control click on the terrain where you want the roads to go. Let me wrap it around this mountain. I'm also going to branch off the network over here into this little valley. And there we go. So I'm happy with this road network. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to flatten the terrain underneath using the carve extension. And we can just adjust it as we see we want it. I'm gonna introduce a bit of noise, increase the strength a little bit and the spread and the intersection looks good. Yep, I'm happy with this. I'm going to click on carve. So we have carved into our terrain along the mountain and we've added this intricate road spline. Now I want to continue this road so you can actually continue to carve along the sections of the terrain like so. I'm probably gonna reconnect the street up here there we go and i can reevaluate where the carve is going to go so i'm going to adjust this and increase the width just slightly and carve so there we go we've got a new carved network that i've updated and now we can also clear trees and details along our spline I'm gonna to go to clear details, I'm gonna clear it. I'm also gonna clear the trees. There we go, so our road network is nicely integrated into our terrain. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to spawn some street lights along the sides of the terrain using the spawner extension. Luckily for us, Gina already comes with a street lamp spawner in the flooded grounds pack. And if you're not sure about how to use the Flooded Grounds pack, be sure to check out our prior videos on how to use the Gina spawners. So to get started, I'm gonna make sure I have the Flooded Grounds pack installed. I'm gonna go in to the Package Manager. I'm gonna import this. Remember that when you import the Flutter Grounds package, you want to only include content and prefabs. So untick everything else except for these two folders. And let's click import. Now that we have Flutter Grounds imported, let's go over to Gina, go to the asset samples, go to content packs, and we can now import the Flutter Grounds content pack. 
Now that we have our content pack installed, let's go over to the procedure worlds folder, go to content packs and go to flooded grounds. Inside of here, you'll see another folder, which is called spawners. Go into that one and you'll see street spawner. Go to the road spline and just click and drag the spawner into the attach extensions box. And now that it's in there, you'll notice these green dots that are along the spline. These are where the spawn points are going to go. And if it's red, it means you cannot spawn it there. But at the moment it's green. So we are going to offset this along the X using the spawner settings. Place it right there. And I'm going to bring them just a little bit closer together and hit spawn. So this has spawned street lights along our spline on the one side of the spline, but they're not all aligned properly. So this, this is where another setting comes in where we can align to spline, which aligns the objects along the spline. And we can even offset the rotation if we need to. At the moment, this one is gonna be set to zero. I'm also gonna offset the position outside a bit and see how some areas they're not actually snapping to ground. You can tick snap to ground. So it'll snap the object to the ground. Moving right along, I'm going to spawn another set of lights across from it by attaching another spawner onto it, which creates a second extension. But this time I'm going to offset it in the other direction. So I'm going to click spawn and I'm also going to align to spline and offset the rotation by negative 90. Neg negative 180. And I'm going to offset the rotation by negative 180. Might need to be dragged out a little bit. And I'm also going to snap that to ground. There we go. So we have our street lights along our spline. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos on Gina.